Hi, now let's discuss about the principle of operation of various instruments for monitoring patients' biological parameters. So now we want to discuss about the sensors, type of sensor, especially uh, thermal and mechanical sensors. So first, thermal sensor. Uh, the first thing I want to discuss about is a thermocouple which uh, uses a fuse uh, we call bimetal, meaning like two metal put together. Fusing two dissimilar metals actually produce a voltage difference with temperature of the junction. And that is called the thermal generating, producing electricity by difference of temperature. So that's thermal electric effect. And that looks almost like this. So you see these two metal with a junction, so two different dissimilar metal wire, and you give a heat compared to the cold, then this generates a voltage difference. So uh, an industrial uh, uh, product looks like this. So this is a shielding with the uh, stainless steel. So you can see this red and blue metal wire, and they have a junction, and that junction is a sensing point, and it will generate voltage. Or TG. So uh, this one is suitable for measuring over large temperature difference, such as up to several thousand uh, degree. And, and so on the other end, it's less suitable for where very small temperature differences need to be measured with high accuracy. So that is less likely, and this application is more like heating appliance. So, you know, it, if you have a uh, heating appliances such as rice cooker at home, and it's likely that this thermocouple has been used. And the second is I want to introduce this so called RTD element, which is resistance temperature detector. So, this RTD are sensors used to measure temperature based on resistance changes with temperature. And how does this RTD or resistance temperature detector looks? It's, uh, it's a very fine uh, wires wrapping around a ceramic or glass core. So here's the uh, two examples with this uh, ceramic. Uh, very fine wires are wrapping around. So when the temperature changes and these substrate uh, thermal expansion will affect the wire and then uh, it can be used for the temperature changes sensor. So this one is a platinum thin film layer with on the ceramic substrate and there's a lid. So this RTD or resistance temperature detector wire is usually a pure metals, uh, typically platinum, uh, nickel, or copper. So, um, so this uh, resistive resistance temperature detector is working on a basic correlation between these metals and the temperature. And, and so uh, it looks almost like this ceramic, and this is a thin film. And, um, so let's see uh, the, this uh, actual data. So when the temperature rises, uh, thinking about this, the re relative resistance also rises uh, with different platinum, cotton, copper, and nickel. So as the temperature element increases, the electrical resistance also increases. Um, so this is my, uh, my theory on this. So that uh, ceramic or glass substrate where uh, thermal expand when the temperature rises, then this is a very thin wire will have will also elongate, so the diameter uh, or cross section goes down, so the resistance will goes up. The third one I want to discuss is thermistor. So thermistor means a thermal plus resistor ester. So that's a temperature sensing element with a resistance varying with temperature. And usually it is a little different from RTD resistance temperature detector that this has a negative temperature coefficient. And because, and that's because it's made with a ceramic or polymeric, 
polymer materials, not the pure metals like RTDs. So it looks almost like this, very simple. Um, and um, it, it, how we operate them, I give you an example here. So that these are um, thermistor, and we have a resistance, and this is a op amp uh, with a follower, and to uh, measure the voltage to analog to digital uh, conversion converter as an input. So this needs a, a circuitry that you see this thermistor. When their ch temperature changes, this resistance changes. And you see this voltage reference and this RT and this thermistor resistance is a voltage divider and that you measure it with this uh, voltage um, uh, follower. So the basic operation is uh, resistance change is supposed to be uh, related to temperature change with a constant as a first order. So look at this uh, data compare, compared with RTD versus thermistor. You see much large uh, uh, resistance changes, you can see. So it has a higher, um, higher gain or sensitivity. And, and also the um, slope is uh, opposite. So then when temperature rises, uh, these thermistors resistance actually goes down. And for, as a note, that uh, typical resist registers, uh, which you don't want it change its resistance over time. So these are designed to have K as of close to as zero. But in thermal sensor or thermistor, you want the K as big so that it can be more sensitive. So, uh, to describe this, uh, people have developed this a empirical formula too. And you can, uh, at a certain temperature, you can always uh, normalize uh, this by Taylor series expansion and you can make a, a linear approximation. So let's compare these various thermal sensors and I note here what's uh, worthwhile to note and thermal coppers and resistance temperature detector, resistance thermal detector, and thermistor. And thermocouple is a, uh, can measure wide range of temperature, but while it's nonlinear. Let's see the data. So thermocouple, you see it's a, a little bit nonlinear. And RTD is more stable, very uh, good linearity, and the most accurate, while you know, it requires a pure metal, so it's costly, and the manufacturing is difficult, so it's costly. And while thermistor is a, a very quick, fast, um, based on the sensing element as a polymer, while the, you can see the range of, of temperature limited and, and itself is a nonlinear response. So there's another um, comparison chart for range and accuracy, linearity, and sensitivity, you can take a look. So now let's move on to discuss about mechanical sensors. Now usually mechanical sensors, we are talking about strain gauge and what are strain gauge and what is strain. So we need to define and the strain first. So when there's a uh, mechanical element and let's say you, you pull this element with a force, then it's likely to elongate. So it'll elongate based on original length of air, that the change as a delta air, then the fractional changes in length. So it's a unitless, and that's defined as a strain. You can see a strain as a epsilon equals delta L over L sub zero, okay? So, the device to measure strain of an object is called strain gauge. And how we can use this? So let me first show how strain gauge looks like. So this is on a thin film. Uh, these are resistance elements like that. And usually in this case measures this ups and down the strains. And deformation of this object uh, gives a substrate deformation and that results in changes in electrical resistance. And you can convert that resistance change into the strain. So um, let me give you a, an example. Pressure sensors. 
So you like um, music and guitar, like electric guitar. These piezo uh, electric, uh, uh, not piezo, it's a strain gauge. It's used here to detect and amplify and converting this sound into an electrical uh, signal. And uh, the mechanism is pretty simple. You see these uh, actual uh, ones into a cartoon. Then strain sensitive pattern, you, in this case, you see this uh, uh, directional change. So that's more like this directional strain we are measuring. So when there's a, uh, let's say tension, then it elongates. So then the cross sectional area narrows down, that means electrical resistance goes up. While compression case, that area becomes thickened and so the resistance will go down. So this very simple principle is being used for measuring strain and that can be measured for, in this case, the pressure changes. So piezoelectric sensor is another, that piezo means a press and squeeze, which will generate piezoelectricity. So microphones, electric guitar, traffic sensor, even automated uh, blood pressure machines uses piezo. Sorry, I have to correct it. This uh, guitar ones are actually piezoelectric sensor, which measures this pressure and directly convert into the voltage. And so that is a piezo. Uh, you see this, uh, this pressure, mechanical pressure can induce a voltage change. In fact, this piezo can be used in reverse, which means you give a voltage to apply to piezo and the piezo will deform. In fact, my PhD thesis, I use a piezo, a linear piezo. I give certain voltage to make a piezo to displace in a tens of nanometer range, a very precise and small displacement. I actually use this one and people have used it for very fine like nanometer or a micrometer uh, ranges of displacement, precise one, you can use this piezoelectric uh, sensor or uh, actuator. So next time we will discuss about electric sensor and optical sensor. And thank